Thank you very much. Uh, have a very nice afternoon. I'm very happy to hear, be here, and uh, you can also join. Um, yes, what it's all about, uh, I want to talk about um, how do you get your students engaged, or your participants, or your, your staff members? Uh, who has ever uh, missed a due date within a course? I did. Um, do all your participants and all your staff members uh, actually complete their assignments and their quizzes absolutely on time, never miss anything? It never happens. So, what could you do? Uh, I just set up a big green one, it is. Um, so, what can you do? Uh, I just set up a really bad course, so I don't, um, I don't um, intend that you build courses like this. So uh, it's just basic material in there. Uh, there's an e-assessment. Uh, participants have to take a quiz. And there's notifications in there. What you could do is you just put the students in there. Uh, and now and again, you check who is finished and send a notification. Uh, but how does it work in an environment where there are multiple students coming in at different times? or? As we had for before in workplace, where you've got employees, you've got uh, onboarding, you've got uh, different participants coming in at different times, and it gets tricky. Therefore, we developed a plugin that's called Didactic Reminder. Uh, so, when you've got coming, when you've got different participants coming in at different times, you can't really set a fixed due date. You start to get relative dates, like you would like to have someone to complete the course within the first like 21 days. So, what can you do? Uh, this didactic reminder is an activity you can just add to your course, and at the very uh, course level, you can add specific tasks. Like, you can send a welcome message right after the student has been enrolled into the course. It doesn't matter how he gets enrolled. Self-enrollment, some magic attachment to your campus management system, or in Moodle Workplace with dynamic rules, once the student get in, gets enrolled, he gets a welcome message. Uh, then there could be a first reminder after like 14 days after his very specific enrollment uh, with a specific message sent to him. The second reminder at the second at 21 days or a specific reminder to a specific group or something positive. If he or she completes the course, you can say, yay, you completed the course in time, well done. Yeah, you can continue with the next course. So it's not just a reminder tool, but it's also a, a, a tool for student engagement where you have positive messages in there. How does it work? Um, the first part is you deselect on uh, to whom to send the message. Uh, you can either select uh, enrollment to the course, you can select inactive participants enrolled into the course, you can select a criteria who has already completed the course or has not yet completed the course, you can set conditions on activities, or you can set conditions on course completion and activities. So it can become pretty tricky. You can also select target groups uh, within your course, so you can send only some messages to group A or some messages to group B. And then you select when to send. So the condition, this can either be fixed dates, which is quite straightforward and easy, uh, or you can make dates based on specific conditions, like if the enrollment has been done, send five minutes later, or if the student has not passed quiz one within 21 days, send this message. Next part is to create a message. Um, it's just like the normal messaging system. You can write any text. You have placeholders, dynamic placeholders, to put in course-specific and user-specific content. And once the message is placed, it will be sent out via Moodle messaging system, either as a pop-up message, come up as a Moodle message on the Moodle app, or, or via email or whatever messaging channels you have set up. Uh, same holds true for reports, um, because there's not only the student who needs to be reminded, there's also um, members of your staff who are in charge for this course, for example. So you can select um, roles within the course, you can select specific emails, and you've got a template again. This template will be sent to uh, the specific roles informing about messages that, that have been sent out. Um, there's also an overview of what has been said. You can activate and deactivate tasks. You can add them. You can also see a uh, history on what has been sent and when it has been sent. And it's straight available for uh, all Moodle currently supported Moodle versions. So the key features um, is set up per course. Uh, it's smart and it's automatic. Uh, you can set multiple tasks within your course. Uh, it's flexible, so you can select who to send uh, and when to send. 
There are placeholders to create efficient messages with an, uh, with a direct information on what the next step is supposed to be. Uh, you can send reports, uh, you can have conditions and filters, um, and you can have relative dates for sending. So uh, it's available, more information is available on our website. You can just click on this QR code and get all the information there. And uh, you can also scan the code in the middle. Uh, these are my personal vCard contacts. Just give me a call. I'll be, after the talk, we have a couple of questions and afterwards I'll be outside. So feel free to contact me directly to get more information. Thanks very much and enjoy the day. Hello, my name is Caroline and uh, this is my boss Runa. As you just witnessed, he uh, didn't want the stage, so I get the stage. Mm -hmm. um, we're a vocational school, so we train all kinds of um, like chefs and carpenters and stuff. We have around these 6,000 students coming through per year in our vocational department. We have different departments. Um, we started our Moodle journey in 2018 and we really got around to it in 2020, before the pandemic though. And we work with a goal that says 2024, all of our entry courses have to have what we call a learning package. A learning package is essentially just a set of courses like most of you probably have in your schools. The thing we want to talk about is how we do it differently, how we make that course content, because we don't leave it to the teachers. Will you click? Thank you. Green one. Nope, that big green one. Thank you. We work in a triangle. I, my title is Digitalization Consultant, which is a little bit broader, but my essential role is as a Moodle admin. My boss will tell you about that later. We have two other corners of our triangle. The teachers are our essential ones. Because these teachers are not educated as teachers, they are subject matter experts. They are a very good plumber who wants to teach. They come into our school, we hire them, and then we try to teach them how to be teachers and didactics and pedagogy and everything. But we don't want to burden them with the extra of having to learn to also create digital learning. So that's what we have the development department for. The development department is 13 to 15 um, colleagues who have a higher education in either e-didactic learning design or graphic design, uh, user experience and all of these. And so whenever we decide, okay, now the carpenters, they need a learning package, the development department, they go out, they talk to the teacher team, they ask them, how do you train? What would you like to do? Is there any differences in how you do it now and what do you want to do in the future? And they ask all these questions and then they go back and they start to set up a structure. In Moodle, they figure out where do we want an assignment, where do we want a quiz and all these things. And they do a lot of back and forth with the teachers and they develop this package um, that is essentially then delivered to the teacher and the teacher just has to know what's in it. They have to tell what should be different and they need to be the ones that tell us now we need an update and all these things, but they don't need to know how to set up an assignment in Moodle. They only need to know how to look at the student's submission and how to grade it and so on. And then there's the last corner. Yeah, I think it's the best way that you don't present our stuff. <laughs> um, so to do this, we then have the Moodle ad, 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 admin, so they would take away the technical barriers together with our, our uh, Moodle partner, so, so they can concentrate on what they're there for to do edu the education that we want. So Caroline is responsible of doing the daily support for the teachers, doing the challenge when they come with a dream of doing a certain assignment or a certain way of structurizing the digital learning path. So you can challenge that, what is capable in Moodle, and find the solution. And the same with the, then the development team is also looking into a new way of, way of learning and adapting that. So this is the core cooperation between those three, three departments. And in that way, the teacher can be te 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 teachers, they can teach plumbing, carpenting, so it's really hard to do digitally, but we're trying to move them slowly into that path. Thank you. Um, this is just essentially to summarize, because my role, as he just said, I need to have both uh, the didactic knowledge, but also knowing about Moodle. Thank God to, that we have our Moodle partner as well, but um, I'm in the middle here, and it's my essential role is, is that of being able to be in both camps which also allows the development department to focus really on design of the learning package. They don't have to know either how the very deep parts of Moodle work. I am there for that. 
they come to me and ask the questions. But mostly for our teachers, what it does, is, and what we see in results, is that they are more encouraged to use Moodle. Um, it's a lot to go out and say to carpenters, hey, um, I know you use a saw and a hammer, but let's do it digitally. Um, they're much more open to what can we do in a digital space. Um, and that's what we want them to be. We want them to be enthusiastic because they also have to translate it to the students themselves because they might, even though we deal with a generation that is supposed to be very digital and everything, it's not always the reality out there. Um, but when we have the teachers be enthusiastic about it and tell them what we need it for, it works a lot better. Um, yeah, that is good. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Anna. I'm coming from the Center for Genomic Regulation, CRG. Uh, I will explain first before jumping in what is Moodle, what we are, because I think that we are a weird case based on what I've seen here. We are not a university. We don't have thousands of uh, students or courses or trainings. We are not a private company. We are a biomedical research public institute, to make it a bit more <laughs> difficult. So, um, so as I was mentioning, no, uh, we are something a bit different. We have around 500 researchers, from which some of them are students that are enrolled to an external university, but they will spend most of the time in our center. So uh, we are using Moodle in a little scale, let's say. We have uh, internal courses that we developed and we upload in our Moodle that we also started in 2018. And then we also have institutional training and international training. Well, these are some of the pictures of some of the hybrid, online, and uh, presential courses. So, as I was mentioning, we have uh, used Moodle for the internal courses. Not only for those, then we open it to uh, these international courses. These are very special courses because are tiny, looking in numbers, maybe it's for 10 to 20 people. And they are coming from all over the world. Uh, from these 20 people, we, we, we have 15 different nationalities. And all these people is coming to learn a new technique, something that has just emerged within the research in the biomedical field. So we want to be very hands-on courses. And they are very practical, but we also have our Moodle course embedded, where we have all the information, all the exercise, tutorials, everything that we do within this training. And then, as we are a very small institute and also a small department, we have been trying to use Moodle in a more creative way. Um, for example, we've been using it for uh, recruitment processes, building some courses for the candidates or for the recruiters. We have been using it, for example, like a welcome treasure hunt within the institute. It's a big building of 2,000 people, but we are a small institute embedded in the building. So we've been trying to create it something a bit different, no? Uh, we've been using it for project meetings, for um, uh, conference, scientific conferences, where we can also include all the knowledge. So this is our learning platform, and we've been using some uh, tools, plugins, well, many of those that you already know, no? But based on our experience, it's been very useful to have some uh, templates of different courses that we've been created and make better year uh, after year. We've been using many different types of uh, plugins and blogs. Uh, Something as simple as the time zone clock, no, in the blog side, it's very useful for us because we have people from all over the world and they are connecting in a specific time and moment. Um, uh, we also, well, this is something I think that most of you use, no, course certificate, attendance tool, uh, H5P, and so on. And then also we've been using a lot of other external tools that we've been having embedded, especially Padlet, where we have... Uh, when we have all our trainings, no, we try to make people know each other because in the scientific community it's very important that the few scientists that are using a specific technique have the chance to learn and know from each other. So we like them to know them before they join the course in Barcelona or if it's online, online, and also to know where they are coming from, where they are connecting, and so on. And then, of course, we have been using other tools no, to make the presentation and the course as interactive as possible. And that's it. Thank you. Hello. Uh, minasan, konnichiwa. Uh, I'm Kangoya from Jinya University in Japan. Uh, I will be giving a writing talk with this title. Uh, Noodle Tokyo Cafe, uh, fostering organic discussions and knowledge sharing. 
the Moodle Tokyo Cafe is a Moodle user event held in Japan. First held on November 3rd, 2011, and held monthly until last month, when it will hold its 180th events. In recent years, it has been used as a place to share topics related to Moodle, uh, brought by participants for about two hours each time. Uh, Moodle Tokyo Cafe is sometimes held in the form of the one-day workshop to provide a hands-on opportunity based on topics discussed at the Moodle Tokyo Cafe. The themes of recent sessions are as follows. Uh, knowledge base enabled by Moodle. Privacy protection and data deletion. Something is wrong with my Moodle. Uh, Moodle 4.1 quick review. Is there a reminder function? And so on. So, why? Why is a, why a cafe? Uh, Moodle Tokyo Cafe is not a members only community, but a site that appears regularly for dis distressed Moodlers. Point? No advantage protect, uh, preparation is required. No participation fee is required. No qualification is required. No one is forced to do anything. So you can even just have a cup of coffee. Uh, because Moodle Tokyo Cafe is such an event, you never know what will happen. Witness a presenter come up with a new idea during a, a presentation. My problem solves someone else's problem. A business between participants is formed on the spot. Yes, organic discussions of inspiration and improvisation in an open forum. That is the style of Moodle Cafe. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's a point. <laughs> yes, he is master of Moodle Tokyo Cafe, and uh, he runs Moodle at the, at the Yokohama City Fire Bureau for the education of fire firefighters. Yeah. The uh, Moodle Tokyo Cafe uh, 12th anniversary event will be held in Tokyo on November 3rd, 2033. The event is free of charge and open to everyone without prior registration. If you have time, please come and join us. Thank you. Arigatouzaimashita. Thank you so much to our lightning talk presenters. I think you actually have a harder job than some, some of the people presenting longer presentations. Um, we do have some time for questions. So if anyone has any questions, Anna, can I ask you to jump up and we'll flick between the presenters and any questions? Is there anyone wanting to chat with any of the presenters? Okay, I actually have a question for, for you, um, because I like the idea of, of your community that you've built. How did you reach the community? How do they know that the cafe exists? Uh, just only, uh, uh, only Facebook group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, and uh, some people will come with an uh, invitation. Yes. It's okay. Well, this one's for uh, Caroline and or Zealand in general. Um, who is on the development team? Like, is it like a graphic designer? Do you have a video producer? Who's uh, like, what kind of skills are on your development team? Um, we have a. There's. Uh, they're always changing a little bit, but they currently have, I think, 13 members on the team. They have a user experience. Uh, background. Um, they all have academic background of some sort. Um, most of them have, so, have some sort of learning design um, background, but they also try, 
we started out with only learning design backgrounds and then we found out we also needed the visual because they do everything like they do images and icons and buttons and everything and that's what we needed the user experience for and especially also the graphic designer is new added to the team and it's already got, has a lot of value. Oh, couple over here. Uh, it's for the Moodle Cafe. Um, in, in what kind of organization does this community take place? What, what Thank the, you. Yeah, what, um, uh, pray, repeat, please. <laughs> what? Yeah. Um, in what organization? What kind of organization kind does of this organization? Moodle Cafe ah, ah, take, yeah, yeah. Uh, this, uh, take place? So please? many organizations. Uh, Someone is a uh, uh, professor. Someone mm -hmm. is a uh, uh, the stuff of fire, <laughs> uh, fire fighters, and uh, someone is a company director, and so many. Uh, yeah. Are they private companies yeah. or administration too? Yeah, yes, it's, uh, they will come. Yes. Thank you. Is that right? okay, sorry. Thank you. Another one over here. So I saw someone else's hand up. <laughs> Hi, uh, my question is for Andreas. Hello. <laughs> Hi. So, and this is quite specific, but is it possible to use the Smart Reminders plugin for the completion of like courses, like say after a certain uh, period of completion? No. To be straight, uh, it's not. It's just meant for sending messages and doing reminders. Uh, the purpose of this plugin is to have one course, just as a simple Moodle course. And if you want to retake this course, you have to take either some other plugins to reset the course, or duplicate the course, or use Moodle Workplace, or whatever. Uh, it's not doing anything to the course. Anybody else? One more. Oh. Also about the smart reminders, the messages that are sent to the uh, students can be translated to multiple languages, like to be sent to the language that the user is using? Currently not. Uh, you have to just put in uh, the, um, the text. Uh, in the long run, you could actually, we could actually do something like templating, uh, where you have got templates, and these templates could have translations, or you could have standard things, but at the very moment, you are limited to doing it, so just the text you put in, uh, but doing groups, maybe groups of uh, people with a certain language, could be a workaround for now. But can you create like uh, single notification, multiple notifications for the same course with the same rule? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Okay. 